Hi, I'm Ken Johnson for SecCast. This tutorial is the third episode in our Introduction to Web Hacking series. In this episode, we discuss mapping and enumeration as well as demonstrate some tools that assist in this effort. So let's get started. Mapping an application consists of looking for both purposefully visible content as well as unintentionally exposed resources. The purpose behind mapping an application is to discover as much about the application as possible. This maximizes the exposed attack surface. The greater the surface, the greater the likelihood of discovering a vulnerability. In addition to mapping all of the visible resources, we can use enumeration or automated guessing to expand the exposed attack surface. It is also likely that we could expose configuration files, vulnerable content, administrative login pages, functionality meant for a user account with elevated privileges, and generally more information about the application and the technology powering it. The website you are looking at is ran by Hackers for Charity and contains a Google hacking database. This is a list of juicy queries that you can make to Google in order to discover information such as usernames and passwords, configuration files, etc. The important thing to know is that search engines such as Google make your life as an attacker a lot easier by documenting and archiving resources that an application had made available. Furthermore, you can perform queries for specific types of data and hopefully find some interesting results. So we will scroll down and view some of these databases. You can see links to queries that search for files that are known to contain username and passwords. We will select the query that discovers files that are likely to contain passwords. We will choose the MySQL history file query. Now we will copy the query and paste it into Google. In this case, we only want to search for this file on the site example.com. Although the Google hacking database is interesting and useful, the important thing to understand is that Google allows you to submit custom queries, so you may wish to purchase reading materials such as the Google Hacking Book or visit Google's advanced keyword search documentation in order to get a better feel for the types of queries you might want to craft. A link for the keyword operators has been provided to you under the references section in this tutorial. Some other query keywords that are useful are in text, which allows you to search pages that contain these words only. File type provides resources that match only the specified file type you have entered, in this case, CSV. Hyphen site allows you to exclude certain sites from your search, helpful if you would like to restrict certain subdomains from showing up in your query. For example, we see this checkproxylist.com site in our search results. We will exclude it by entering hyphen site colon checkedproxylist.com, and now you can see it does not show up in our search results. If you are unfamiliar with Nmap, Nmap is typically used to discover open ports on remote systems, although there are plenty of other features and options available. So much so that it would not make sense to discuss all of them in this video as there are already so many videos, tutorials, blog posts, documentation, and other resources to assist you in learning more. The main thing to take away from this is that web applications may have ports other than 80 or 443 available. I've discovered Tomcat manager interfaces, Oracle administrative pages, and just generally dangerous resources on ports other than 80 or 443 that would have gone undetected without a port scan. Okay, so we'll run nmap against setcast.com, and thankfully we only have ports 80 and 443 open. Burp Suite Intruder allows us to automate sending a large number of requests. We do this by first capturing a request we've initiated through our browser and then send that request to the intruder portion of Burp. Once at the intruder tab, we have the option of matching and replacing certain pieces of that request each time intruder kicks off an attack or request. There are a plethora of options and functionality within intruder and Burp as a whole, but in this case, we only want to enumerate files that may exist on the remote server or application. The first thing we will do is capture our request and send it to Intruder. Once at the Intruder tab, we will remove the default insertion points Intruder has added and instead add an arbitrary value after the forward slash in the path portion of the HTTP request. In this instance, the arbitrary value will be the number one. 
The next thing we must do is select our word list. Each time a request or attack is sent, Intruder will replace the number 1 with the next value in the word list. You can see we have about 25,000 requests to send using the SVN Digger word list. To reiterate, this is really us automating the process of guessing file names that might exist on the web, application, or server. Since I know this is safe and to speed things up, I'll select a thread count of 25, which basically means 25 requests can be sent in parallel at one time. We will sort the responses from the application by each request's response code. A 200 HTTP response code can indicate the presence of the resource Intruder has requested. So it appears the file named log exists on the remote application. Note that in the response, we can see the application's log file, and there are a few interesting details provided to us here. The first is that we can see both the libraries the application is using, as well as their version numbers, through the logged application error or stack trace. This allows us to perform some research on the libraries the application is using and determine if vulnerabilities exist for them and their specific versions. Additionally, you can see the location of an administrative resource has been provided to us. Again, this effort provides us with a broader attack surface or potential avenue for exploitation. A robots.txt file is used to prevent search engines from spidering and archiving certain application resources. This sort of ties back to what we discussed with Google hacking. So, most sites have a robots.txt. This in and of itself is not a vulnerability. However, this file can contain additional resources that we are not supposed to see or request, so it is considered a fundamental or basic check that we should perform in every assessment. We will request the robots.txt file, and we can see an admin dashboard URL. Let's go ahead and request that resource. As you can see, we now have access to the administrative console as it was not adequately protected from unauthorized access. Again, this is one more tool in your discovery arsenal. An application spider effectively searches an application for all links or references to individual application resources. It requests those resources, then searches those pages for links, so on and so forth. Think of it as a recursive search function. This allows us to build a sitemap so that we can broaden our attack surface and make sure we are assessing as much of the application as possible. The first thing I will do is verify our browser is sending requests to Burp using Voxy Proxy. We will then navigate to the Spider tab within Burp. And let's choose the Options tab. Burp Spider will submit data to forms if you allow it to do so. This way, even more content is discovered as it attempts to automate using the application much like a human would. I will tell the spider not to prompt for guidance or automatically submit forms for the purpose of this tutorial. Additionally, I will disallow the automatic submission of credentials to any login forms. And I'll bump the thread count up to 20. The sitemap you see is pre-spider. Now let's go back to the spider tab and kick off the spider. Now that the spider is running, let's view the sitemap. You can see that as more resources are discovered, our sitemap grows, effectively broadening the attack surface. So to recap, we've learned the purpose of mapping. We've demonstrated Google hacking, using Nmap, using Burp Suite Intruder with the SVN Digger word list, checking robots.txt, and spidering an application. I'm Ken Johnson. This has been another episode of SecCast. Thanks for watching.